John, if you could uh, tell us about some of your impressions so far on the Olympics. Well, you have to, uh, I guess, know that I've worked on the Olympic Games and coverage since uh, 1984 and worked at five Olympics, uh, including a couple behind the scenes where things are very different than they are on television. Uh, I think the first thing that impresses me is uh, that China got their facilities in order and uh, uh, had everything ready to go uh, long before the start of the games. Uh, they had seven years to get ready. Uh, I have to tell you the truth, in Atlanta, where I worked, the paint was still drying on some of the metal uh, podiums uh, as events were ending. And uh, in Barcelona, uh, quite honestly, I'm not sure that some of the facilities were ever completed. I'm not sure they're completed now. So. Uh, China did a fantastic job in the facilities. They're all state-of-the-art. The, the swimming venue that's been on display is, is unbelievable. And uh, I think uh, that will be a tremendous legacy for this Games, uh, for that nation, to have those kinds of facilities in hand. Any moments that have stood out to you so far athletically Why? Well, first, I think you have to start with the opening ceremonies, which was tremendous. There are varying uh, uh, guesses about what that cost, because there's no way to know, but I've heard $150 million, I've heard $200 million, and I'll be honest with you, if it costs that much money, every dollar of it is up there on the screen. There's absolutely no question that the imagery was dazzling. Uh, uh, just that one little bit where all the drummers were down on the field, it looked like a special effect from the Matrix movie. But it was not a special effect. It was live human beings, uh, and it was absolutely remarkable. Obviously, to this point, the most interesting competition has been swimming. Uh, I think track and field hasn't started yet. Uh, the women's uh, gymnastics team finals on Tuesday will be a highlight, I suspect, with the battle uh, with the United States and China in another battle, but uh, practically everywhere from beach volleyball to cycling has, has had its share of highlights and, and I think NBC's done a pretty good job of communicating uh, what it all means even if it's not an American winning an event. Talk about their coverage so far. What have you thought about, uh, you mentioned that they've done a good job of communicating it and what's stood out to you about that? Well. They have a problem, of course, that so much of the competition is held when everyone here is asleep. So there's going to be a certain amount of tape coverage. Uh, they push to have live coverage in the morning uh, uh, from swimming, uh, in the morning over there, which means in prime time here. And they've taken some criticism for it, but with the world records that are being set, apparently it hasn't affected uh, the level of competition very much. Uh, I, NBC uh, uh, spends the money they spend and it, it, every penny, again, seems to be out there. There's some amazing technical additions this time, uh, uh, projecting the names of the swimmers onto the screen where you can see which lane they're in, the underwater cameras. I expect in some of the other sports there will be similar technical advances and the commentators do just enough. They don't overtalk. Uh, they let the silences work sometimes, and they put uh, successes and failures into some context. So I've been I've been pretty impressed. I have to say, by way of disclosure, I've never taken a penny from NBC in all the years I've done uh, Olympic coverage. I've tried to get jobs <laughs> with them before, but uh, I can uh, I have never worked for them. So I'm I think I can be pretty objective about that part. Great. Thank you. Any final thoughts on, on what we'll see this week uh, coming up? Well, I think it's just interesting to continue to watch the battle between China and the United States in particular. I, I used the phrase Big Red Machine for China the other day. So when Rick Riley puts that in ESPN, the magazine, I, I, I did that first. So uh, they've been preparing. Uh, uh, for more than seven years for some sort of athletic coming out and I think this will be it. They may not win the total medals but uh, uh, they, they will be in a, a good fight with the U.S. I think for medal totals and may win more gold. Track and field 
begins at a low level later this week and really picks up next week. And that's the that's the signature event of the Olympics as much as anything. And as long as there aren't too many positive drug tests, I think it's going to be an outstanding uh, an outstanding track and field meet. Hopefully, the air will be clear enough that. Uh, that uh, no one will be negatively affected there and, and in, here in northeast Mississippi we have a rooting interest in Brittany Reese who will be uh, performing in the long jump, the former Ole Miss jumper, I believe her first uh, preliminary jumps maybe on Tuesday of next week so that'll be worth keeping an eye on when that rolls around. Sounds great. Well thank you very much. My pleasure. Let's do it again.